because I really think that what you are doing, and it's not to compliment you, but it's extremely important. Hey, it's Josh. I'm just hanging out here with my buddy from the United Nations. As you do, no big deal. I'm Jean-Nicolas Beuze. I'm the representative of uh, the UN Refugee Agency, UNHCR in Canada. And I'm very happy that we are having this conversation. I am too. I'm really happy it's not raining on, on us. <laughs> For once in Vancouver. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Why are you in Vancouver? So I'm in Vancouver because we go around the country just to explain a little bit what is the situation of refugees worldwide and try to raise awareness about the needs abroad, but also in Canada, where we see a little bit the, uh, the narrative in the media, in the political cir circle, shifting a bit away from a compassionate approach. Right. So why is that? What, what is happening to people's compassion? We have never seen that many refugees in the, in the world. We are going to be close to 25 million. We have an additional 40 million who are displaced within their own country. So 70 million people are forced to, to flee their country, their home, their family, their job. Everything is left behind. This is the highest number since the Second World War. And I think those numbers are freaking out people. Who are these refugees? Like who's coming here or trying to? In Canada, we don't have big numbers. We have 50,000 a year asylum seeker, refugee claimants who come to Canada, knocked on the door and say, hey, I want to be recognized as a refugee because I cannot live where I am. So what about the people who say, well, we need to take care of our own first? Is this an issue of we can only do one or the other? I don't think we can do one or the other. I mean, Canada is a G7 country, very strong economy, based on the rule of law with uh, I mean, look, look around us, yeah. there's a, a striving economy, businesses, and we have the capacity to receive those uh, 50,000 asylum seekers. Let's not forget, once they are accepted, because they are recognized as refugees, they are going to get a job, they are going to go to university, they are going to create businesses for, for you, for me, for other people around, and therefore they will contribute immediately uh, to, to the society. So I think that the other groups which constitute uh, the mosaic of Canada have also to demonstrate their, their welcoming and their compassion. And something else that I see a lot online is people saying they're going to hurt Canadian values or change our values. They don't want to assimilate. What about that? Are we looking at them changing our culture? I see you follow the actuality, uh, as is, the news quite closely <laughs> here indeed. But what are the Canadian values? Are the Canadian values not a question of being fair and compassionate, on, on being based on human rights, on respecting minorities, whatever they are, whether they are religious, sexual orientation or gender identity, or whether they are about political dissenting opinion? Opening the door to refugees who come because they want to live the life that they cannot live is something which is very Canadian. And so what about LGBTQ refugees in particular? What, what are you seeing in that area? So we know that uh, unfortunately in quite a number of countries, being uh, gay, lesbian, transgender, bisexual or non-binary is really uh, a form of risk. It puts you at risk, persecution by your own family, by your own community, but also persecution by the state or by non-state actors groups, traffickers or criminal gangs who are going to negate who you are just on the basis of your sexual uh, orientation or gender identity. So they have difficulties really uh, leaving their country. And then when they arrive in uh, asylum countries, you have different situations. Some countries receive them and help them. Other countries continue to ostracize them and persecute them. That's why we count on Canada to also help some, the most vulnerable of those, LGBTQ refugees to come to Canada. And in this city, actually in Vancouver, we have a great group uh, of uh, refugee rainbow or rainbow refugees. Yeah. I don't know in which order. Rainbow refugees. Yeah. Rainbow refugees, <laughs> which does an absolutely fantastic job of sponsoring most vulnerable uh, uh, LGBTQ refugees from Kenya, from Mexico, Syria, to come and live in, uh, in Canada, in Vancouver. So speaking of Rainbow Refugee, I've put together a circle of hope to help bring over a refugee. But what I knew it, that's why I was mentioning it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's absolutely fantastic. Oh, thanks. I feel like I have an obligation to do something like that to help people because I, like you said, like I just feel very lucky that I happen to be born here. 
Um, and so and I, that you were able to express yourself mm -hmm. very early on of yeah. who you are, what you want to be, who you want to love. It's not fair that it's not a given. I've, I've worked a lot in, in Africa. I've, lo uh, I've worked in Uganda, which is one country where you have really strong homophobic uh, laws and, and mentality and, and thinking. And, it, and the situation is quite desperate because LGBTQ people I was meeting there uh, felt that they were at risk even in their own home from their own family. Wow. Yeah, that, uh, <laughs> that's very different. And you know, when I have this video on my YouTube channel, there's going to be lots of people commenting negatively. Despite everything you said, they're not going to want to let other people come in. So I guess just any like final thoughts or even ideas of how do we get the conversation? Like obviously we're not gonna just change someone's mind with this video, but how do we have that conversation without it getting into this big heated debate? First, I will challenge you that with this video, you will not change the mind of, of, of a few because I really think that what you are doing and it's not to compliment you, but it's extremely important because people have to relate on a one-on-one -on -one basis on that kind of discussion. There's many ways of getting engaged. It can be through donation to UNHR or other partners. It can be by just mentoring people who have arrived here and say, okay, I'm going to help you navigate the job market uh, in Canada mm. or help you to find your way to buy medicine or to sponsor a refugee. I think we need to engage with people who are challenging us. We should not put our head into the sand. We have a responsibility. You have a responsibility as a leader of the LGBTQ community to fight for the right of your people, that include also refugees. And I think that what you are doing by promoting those issues is absolutely key. So I really believe that videos, communicating, messages, social media, personal testimonies make a huge difference. Okay, good. I'm feeling more optimistic and empowered. You came because of Loud Foundation and Foundation of Hope, yeah. right? Which are two organizations that I volunteer with as well. So give them a shout out. We yeah. will. Tomorrow we are meeting all of them. They've been fantastic supporters. They want to do more. They realize that, as you were saying, that we are the lucky one and we can give back to our own communities, the LGBTQ community, mm -hmm. but also bigger to see at refugees in need of our support and help. I'm going to put some links in the description below. Thank you so much for coming to my rooftop. Merci, Josh. <laughs> and we are going to uh, cross finger for the end of the month. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I'm sure that you will also pass this message back in, uh, in South Africa. So keep Absolutely. up the good fight. Thank you. Thank you. You too.